G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. Today we're going to be breaking down a big round seven. There is lots to talk about in this round. Another carnage round that hit us hard. Let's go! Hodge has done it from nowhere. G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys AFL Fantasy Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. Join us always, or once again, actually, you missed last week. Yeah, it's good to have him back, but Luke Rogerson, mate, back and uh, hopefully feeling a little bit better. A little I, bit, I, mate. I, I'm I still, hope. yeah, I'm still disgusting and, and sickly, but... Um, Fantasy's been that bad for you recently, hasn't it? Yeah, I told you it was the beverage thing that yeah. got me, and it was just... <laughs> got it was, you good. It was down here for like three weeks. It was killer, but um, good opportunity to say thanks for Bales um, jumping Shout on last week. Shout out to Bales. Well. Yeah, yeah. I was, it was cool to be able to... Got himself in the top 1,000, the old Bales. I'd right. have to think it's on the back of coming onto our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all got to do with that, I'm sure, but it was good to, to listen to you guys go through some things last week, and... Um, but I'm happy to be back in the chair, mate. He, he did too good a job, so I had to jump back in and make sure I can still hold down the, the fort here. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I mean, let's get stuck into it, mate. We had a big round of seven. Yeah. Uh, it was, there was a lot happening, rookie carnage, some laid out, some squirts about some subs and things like that. Got everyone, you know, all their tails up and about. So It was all going on, how, mate. How did you go and how did you score uh, in week seven? Well, 20-63 in the end was my score. And I think kind of like as the round was going on, I thought, oh, this is going to be good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up some ranks. But it really only shot me up kind of, oh, what's that, two, 300 ranks. So I'm now uh, 1,590, which is still like a good spot to be in, um, but just not as much as I would have hoped to move up. So I think the score was maybe like just above par. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, got a win in the Content Creators Cup as well. Got Guesty there. Um, hey, you, you must be in the, uh, the finals picture there at the moment. Mate, you, I'm, I'm few, few rounds on the trot. Correct. I'm starting to move in the right direction. So to be, uh, it's very different from where I was this time last year in that in that comp. So yeah, be yeah. afraid, content creators can't be very afraid. Uh, I did slightly better, uh, twenty ninety one. So just you know, what's that? Twenty something odd points ahead of you. But uh, so that pushed me again up just a little bit. I was ranked one ninety five going into the round. I'm ranked one forty three. Uh, after this round, so just we're gonna have to get this doorway widened here, mate. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna get through there, fucking. No, 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 no. Chair. Keeping a lid on, keeping a lid on, and uh, so that puts me <laughs> twenty-two points behind uh, fellow, well, content creators, cup compatent uh, in DC Caterpillars, who sits at number one hundred. Um, yeah, so, he's bang on. I saw that actually. So yeah, the, uh, the the hat chase and the content creators cup overall chase is the exact same at this stage, um, and it also I've, I've Put a new little tracker in there. Just, okay. I don't know, ambitious maybe. But I'm 230 points behind first place. So, uh, who is actually a listener of the podcast? He's, he's in the uh, the Ball Boys <laughs> Fantasy Open League. Um, so, we're going to chase him down. What's his name? Uh, Jordan P, get out of the kiln, is uh, sitting there in first. So, I'm 230 points behind him. So It's good, mate. You, you worked well on that um, fake modesty. <laughs> Turn, yeah, yeah. turn the record button off and this guy's Yahoo oh, and like you, like you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> uh, and I defeated the undefeated Mini Monk who had a bit of a, you know, pretty unlucky round. He's had fair, a tough so, couple of rounds yeah, to be fair. So, so. Um, yeah, not, nothing really to, to gloat about there. He, he had a bit of a tough one. So uh, yeah, now it puts me up first in the Content Creators Cup tied with DC, I think. Um, so. Yeah, mate, we've got lots to talk about today, but I, I haven't really looked at uh, fantasy at all today. So I'm going to be, this is my first reaction to everything that you're, you're going to tell me today. I'm just going to be your sounding board and uh, we're going to get through some of the topics, eh? Well, before we talk about anything useful, uh, let's talk about the bogs and flogs. Get the emotions out uh, off our chest, mate, and, and cuss out these players <laughs> that, uh, that didn't do so well in the weekend and the players that did do very good. Uh, so let's chuck that up there. And the winner... The Norm Smith medal. You're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. You're an embarrassment. Cast their minds all the way back oh, yeah. to Wednesday. And I don't know about you, man, but I think the five-day fantasy week is just one day too long. It was a oh, lot. No. It was a lot Especially too... when it's a shit round and you've got these rookies coming in. and yeah, It was a lot to take poorly. on. But, I mean, there was nothing nothing bad about watching Big no. Maxi go to work. Big because, Maxi. I, mean, I, just, I reckon we just pencil this one in every week, Melbourne, Bulk. It, it seems to just... It seems to absolutely be the, be the case. It, so. uh, now we can't we can't get to uh, you know last year we were talking about Tim Taranto and 
you know, how good yeah. he was and a permanent captain every week. So, still got to do our due diligence in terms of captain stuff, but obviously he is absolutely killing it this year. And those who didn't start him, are obviously, as we got a little message from uh, from Gessy saying that, you know, he's ruining his season. And uh, yeah, priced at, was he 90-something in the start of the season? He's going 124. Yeah, just massive, massive season so far. The flog, I'm going to give it to again the second time in uh, two rounds for the Melbourne midfield. All three of them sucked again. Um, and I don't know what to make of it. I know that um, Petrarca was getting tagged a little bit, which is, again, yep. a bit weird from Richmond to do a bit of a tagging job with um, Pickett. So he went to Petrarca. The other two didn't take any advantage of it. And uh, we're still left kind of not knowing when is the right time or if there will be a time that we trade into any of these Melbourne mids because they're just not getting it done at the moment. Yeah, it's a weird one, but more talk about that one later. Essendon and Collingwood, the Anzac Day game there, and um, Zachy Merritt just keeps getting it done. So it's a vanilla bog, but uh, he can Hasn't have it Hasn't dropped under 100 yet. Yeah, and I think he's getting close to being the only player there. I think Heaney was... Heaney was, but Sheasel not still. anymore. Sheasel is still there. So a couple of players there on the top. Max run. did it in round zero, so if you take it into consideration, he, um, he is not there as well. So I think it might just be Merritt and... Uh, she's or did Whitfield was I know he had a 93 last week so yeah I think it's just those two boys you were a bit salty watching this game mate some of the words out of your mouth were not respectful to the veterans well, but uh, why were you fucking Jake Stringer <laughs> what are we doing here uh, oh look I this is a bit selfish because I traded in Jai Caldwell thinking that he was the best option in the forward line uh, I had Nick Dacos lined up but you know a few things just had me question the forward line and, and wanted to get a forward to cover in some of the bad rookies which ironically meant that I pushed Darcy Wilson to the bench so lost me 20 points on my upgrade uh, because of that because Jakey Stringer just went into the midfield and just became a permanent inside mid there with the I think equal most centre bounces uh, of the game just out of absolutely nowhere. Um, he does like getting a bit of time in there occasionally. Uh, it was his birthday is what I have to go with. Some birthday CBAs, you reckon? Some birthday CBAs. I hope it's not there next week um, against West Coast. I'm hoping that, you know, he'll want to maybe sit in the forward line and, and kick a couple of snags <laughs> as a result and uh, that'll um, keep him happy. But just not the week, man. Like, just not the week. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit unfortunate for you on that one. Yep. Next game... GWS versus Brisbane. Brisbane, Tommy. two wins on the season, mate. Yeah, it's not looking good, hey. But uh, it is looking good for for Tom Green, known as after a couple He's of back. couple of tough weeks there, and we we were pretty happy with those tough weeks. But um, I think Green owners would have been happy with a what was it one twenty one thirty something in that range. So he gets he gets the bog. Yeah. Another, another vanilla bog from me. The flog here goes for Dane Zorko, uh, who. Just uh, when everyone who traded him in a few weeks ago were they were up on their high horse, going, "Oh yeah, I traded him in." You guys were all saying he was he was too much of a risk, but enter the Irishman. Enter the Irishman. Yeah, another bone to pick with that one there. Uh, but bloody McKenna comes in. He starts off the half forward line. He was everywhere. He was half forward. He was mid. He yeah. was back. He was all over the shop. Um, and his scoring did not like it. I think what he scored a 60 in that game. Yeah. Um, his injury history hasn't even shown its head just yet. Um, so it's just another question mark on the forward line, just like we've got every other question mark. So you can't trade into him. Owners are left going, well, what the fuck do I do? What's his role going to be moving forward? Is this as simple as, you know, McKenna in, him forward, but he still had a little bit of defensive time. I don't think Brisbane knows what they're doing with him. Uh, so, yeah, just more questions than answers. Was yeah, all forward line's fucked up. Hey, uh, in this next game, I, I'm giving it... This bloke didn't turn up, but the Wang did poke his little head up, didn't he? Because tough we, matchup. That was the thing. Tough matchup. And to go with 96... Um, neither of us watched this game, but I did. I don't. I don't know if I've told you this, but I did happen to tune in for like the last two minutes of the game, just because we'd gone off to bed. I thought I'll catch the last two minutes. Literally in the last two minutes is D fifty stoppage and um, oh, Port. Port were trying to keep the ball in tight, so Ruckman just tapping off the left hip. Yeah, and it just so happened that Wang was standing behind his opponent, two tackles oh. in the last like it would have been he only forty had two seconds. tackles for the game. Exactly, last forty <laughs> seconds of the game, and they were just the easiest ones. Tap down, tackle. Next stoppage, tap down, tackle. Oh, so you was, love to I see was it. Licking my lips there at the end, but uh, but yeah. Uh, you reckon not, you taught him how to tackle because he had zero tackles in the first two rounds, and then you trade him in round three, and since then he's been tackling, mate. I just uh, taught him taught him how to be 
Tough as woodpecker lips like myself. Yeah. <laughs> Showing right. up to podcast with the sniffles. Fuck, I'm tough. Oh, <laughs> you're slogging it out, mate. You're good right. on you. We all thank you for it. Oh, I'm going to flog to the rookie roulette. Just again, I alluded to earlier, but Darcy Wilson sat on my pine this week. Didn't even have the bloody emergency. I had someone better. We'll get to that later. But um, yeah, just chose the wrong rookie again. I thought... Port Adelaide, they they restrict teams with marks, so let's get the guy in who averages all those tackles. And he still got tackles, but he just got none of the pill. He had less disposals than he did when he came in as the sub. Yeah. Um, so just rookie roulette just continues to suck week in, week out. Um, and I will never get it right. So that's I just... think on that one, we might have overthought that. I think we should have just gone with like Darcy Wilson's been a proven scorer for more weeks. Just yeah. lock that in. Maybe the E on. You know what Darcy also here, sucks? You can, but... You know what also sucks this year is the amount of rookies we have in the same team. Like we've got mm. the Gold Coast boys, Graham and Closey. We're always umming and ahhing who's going to be the better one there. Got that one wrong as well. Yep. Um, Darcy Wilson and now Garcia. And if you're looking to trade in Jones and you've already got a Harvey Thomas, there's two G- GWS boys there sitting in your team as well. Like it's just it's just a nightmare. You can't even loop those kind of players. It's like, a proper loop fiasco. Yeah, that is. Oh, yeah. Put them. Uh, let's go on to the next one, uh, which is what's the next game? Who you got? North. Melbourne versus Adelaide. The Shees keeps getting it done. Ton run, vanilla bog in that one. There were a couple. I mean, there were a couple of uh, decent things happening in that particular game, but the Shees is just getting it done consistently. Uh, the flog on this one here is Tom. Pow, <laughs> pow on this one here. Almost missed my cue. Yeah, thirty-four <laughs> points, Luke. Uh, shifted forward. No idea why. So I'm also giving this to Clarko. Yeah, because he was one of their few bright spots in the team. And, and well, let's just chuck him in the forward line. And uh, look, he did the right thing and did a really shit job of that. So hopefully that means he doesn't get that job again. Yeah, we'll talk We'll talk more in more detail about this in a little bit. But I get the feeling at the moment, Clarko's just picks up all the magnets and just throws them just throws at the it, Yeah, I mean, um, he's got to do something. I get that. But I yeah. don't know if that was the move to pull. But it definitely... Puts us fantasy coaches in a spot of bother as to what to do with him. So he and Clarko get the flog for this one here. Geelong versus Carlton. I don't Best know. on ground. You, you had nothing for well, me I, here. This is a largely fantasy irrelevant game. So Walsh, I guess, 100. Zach Williams, if when you held, like if you held because you got rid of Fisher in the end, he's kind of a 60. Like that's nothing. What so. about Grind Wise? How did he go? Well, he's fantasy irrelevant. 106. Well, he might not be given the forward line this year. He is. He is making waves, isn't he? But uh, yeah, bog for that one. Just yeah, I don't. I don't really care to be. Yeah, honest. it's not that very exciting at the top there. But I will say the flog for this one is. Uh, well, I've got a slash here. I've got Oli Domsey, but I'm also giving the flog to you because Me? you mozzed the shit out of this guy. Serious? He Who? went huge in the first quarter. And then get the text in the group chat. Oh, just as I trade out Ollie Dempsey, he goes good. And then from there, 18 points in the next three quarters. Moss, 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 finishes moss, moss, with a 50. You absolutely put the moss I, on here. I didn't even I was, trade him out. I, I was just on my bench. Oh, you just you just didn't have him. So, yeah, yeah. you ruined him for everyone. Um, but, yeah, he was forced to stay on my field for one more week after the... Uh, the trade out of the fish. That was a good Moz, hey? The little text Moz. Oh, is it, it was it just stopped him in his tracks because he was Moss, 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 huge Moss, Moss, in that Moss, first Moss. quarter. And then, uh, yeah, just his lowest score so far this season. Put um, the handbrake on. Yeah, absolutely you did. All right, the Frio versus Western Bulldogs game. You've got a bit of a victory lap on this one here. There was no sign of a handbrake for Nat Fife. <laughs> This this was a long time coming. I'll be <laughs> kissed right on the tip, mate. And God, it feels good to be kissed on the tip because I've waited weeks and weeks while Fife scored like a rookie every week. I wanted to get off him, and finally, was he the top scoring forward this round, bro? This is the thing. It it, it was a game that reminded me of why I loved watching Nat Fife all those years ago. He's an actual jet. Like yes. fantasy aside, he, he the, was very good. The quick hands in close, he just opened up so many opportunities for Frio. So that was that was a good watch. Uh, yeah, he I was. He was the highest scoring forward this week. Well, bro, it's just good coaching. I got him in there, and <laughs> I've only waited seven weeks to get a good score. But there it is, baby. Holy shit! The Fife Meister, the, get around him. Yeah, well, good on you. Let's savor that one. But I uh, know he did look good. Honestly, he did <laughs> he's, look he's very, back, I tell very you. good. Mate, you, sh- you should trade him back in, mate. The flog goes to Andrew Brayshaw's final quarter because uh, I was saying to you during this game, oh, he's back. Andrew Brayshaw, he's back. I'm going to trade him in. This is the guy I always love to trade in around this time of year and he goes well for me in that that final quarter. Just put a handbrake on that thought process because negative two, not even like it was a quiet quarter. He went backwards. (laughs) He he said, hold on. No, that's too good. 
I'm going to go backwards. And he had two handballs and two free kicks against in that final quarter. Um, so that sucks. And also, I think you snuck this one in here. Uh, Bonson Pelly. What a camel. He is a bit of a camel he's these days. So he's, just, he's not even no like, thirst. Not even the thirsty camel. He's just a straight up quenched camel. That guy, yeah, that doesn't guy need a drink. hates me and hates points. Hates coming on the field too. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know what the Bulldogs are doing, but what the game's, what, a goal? Yeah. A goal in it. And he spent eight minutes Let's on the Let's just put the, the best player in the comp on the bench and leave him well, there for eight minutes. Well, best player in the comp, I'm disputing that. Well, last moment. year at least. I've, I've he's traded. no Isaac Heaney. He's averaging a good... 70 odd for me so there's something going on with Bonds I, don't, I can't quite put my finger on it um, oh, man. it doesn't seem quite right to me uh, last game or last two games Gold Coast versus West Coast best on ground pretty vanilla one here again yeah big Flanders getting it done uh, I'm going to go with teammates as the flog in Jack Lukosius who was a bit of a an option uh, he was always kind of down the options but always just, someone to consider and just yeah he's just shit the bed here and, it's just uh, Jack Lukosius when he's going bad it's yeah. Jack Lukosius when he's going good mate. yeah right well so just, I think I think with a couple of moist games coming up he might be someone that might not want to stick around in your forward line you so might want to be looking elsewhere you, <laughs> you might want to be looking elsewhere <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Hawthorne versus Sydney. Best on ground. Who have we got, mate? Errol getting it done, but Roberts as a rookie. He's going to be... Uh, Roberts as the saved say, this the, one. Lots the of points. Of the year. Yeah, the... lots of points last. But right. mm. don't care how he gets there. If he keeps Absolutely. punching those out, it is happy days. Absolutely. The flog uh, could have been a more emphatic flog this game, but Brody Grundy, you, you, I didn't watch this one, <laughs> but you saw the last little bit of, of junk time where he apparently racked up 15 points in the last... like Inexplicably, I... I stepped past the TV. He's like two mark kicks followed by three handballs. Just oh, filthy. Nothing of the stuff. Uh, so he's gone from a 142, <laughs> whatever he had the week before, and he's gone and backed it up with nearly a 50, oh, nearly man. 100 points less the following week <laughs> and saved it to a 70. So halved his score. So making the decision of who to trade out in your ruck line, if you've got the three rucks, a lot easier for those people who did hold him for the extra Week. All right. Let's talk about some strategy. Lots to talk about, but I want to start first and foremost okay. with the forward line. Yep. This week, we struggled. Lots of people struggled, unless you were kissed on the tip with uh, Nat Fife in your forward line. Um, what kind of kissing is that, mate? Um, that was more of a su- sucking, wasn't it? It was more of a <laughs> Jesus. <just laughs> Let's, suckling. So who are we, who Matt, are we confident Matt, Matt in suckling. the uh, the forward line? Like, if we go to look at some upgrade targets, uh, their Do players I, in the forward line, obviously you've got the big two. You've got Isaac Heaney and Sam Flanders. Yep. They're basically, would you say, like just a must-have at this point? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, at this point, especially because we're so bereft of other options. Because well, yeah, like, if you don't have those two, like who else are you putting there instead of them? Yeah. You're giving up like 50, 60 points every week. This makes for the general argument. I've said it a couple of times, but because there's no obvious options to go to, I kind of feel like the players just keep upgrading the rest of your team and just keep playing that, you know, looping type rookie roulette in the forward line. It, it doesn't feel good, but like there's every chance if you go to a guy like a Cordwell, we see mm. what happened to you on the weekend. He didn't mm. quite go as well. And then you kind of left with egg on your face a little bit. Yeah, he went cool bad. <laughs> he did go cool bad. <laughs> I'm rubbing off you. That's horrible. And, like, and even a guy like Tom Power, who we thought was a, a safe forward oh, line option. before last week, yeah. Yeah, so I don't think, I'm not going to be trading a Tom Power this week unless there's more information that comes to light. The thing with that, and we said we talked about it more, is the, the Phillips thing. So Phillips went in there, but got subbed around the yeah. third quarter, was it? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure, but that to me suggests that they, they said, Phillips, you've had yeah. a go and fucking out you come, mate, because that's rubbish. Yeah. We'll talk about Tom Powell in a second, but I just want to read you through some of the options at the top. Uh, these are the, the highest averaging in the last five forward options. Yep. You've got Dane Zorko. No. Just put up a 60. You can't trade weekend. him in. Shay Bolton. Talk to me about Shay. I mean, the problem is it is 811,000. Yeah. He's probably one of the most expensive options of them. Is he an option? He's averaging 101 in his last five. He yeah. had a stinking start at the beginning of the season, but that first game, Gold Coast just pantsed Richmond, and yeah. uh, we know now that they're one of the hardest, well, they are the hardest team to score against for midfielders. Yep. Carlton, another really tough matchup for midfielders as well. So we've got a bit more data on that, and then he had an 89 versus Port, and since then the matchups have been more friendly. Is he someone, and I don't think he's getting talked about a lot, but is he someone that we need to maybe consider a bit more highly? The issue I find is that he's 811,000. Yeah, in, in my opinion, like uh, there's a certain point where you have to start upgrading your forward line, but yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be forced into that before I can go ahead and make the upgrades that I'm actually really happy with. Like I, I'm sure you'll go into it in a bit of detail, but if 
uh, Bolton is giving you that sort of mid 90 stuff, there's every chance on one week he's going to give you a 60 or 70. Yeah. And like we saw with Wilson on the weekend, if you pick the right rookie, there's every chance they could give you 90. So yeah. whereas I feel like if I'm going to somewhere where I'm more confident, the back line, the midfield, perhaps I'm more confident that I'm going to get a bit higher, more yeah. confident I'm going to get a 110 from my trade in than I am with yeah. trading in a call well trading in even, even a McRae to an extent we haven't seen him without Libba. So is that kind of the way that you also feel about it? Or? I do feel that way. I do feel that way. I, I guess it depends on what kind of rookies you have on field, but you, you touched on a Wilson, like he's got North Melbourne this week and, um, you know, if you can go 92 against Port Adelaide, um, you've got North Melbourne and then Hawthorne the week after who give up a shit ton of marks. So there's at least two weeks that I think we're, we're happy to ride with him on field. We didn't have Harley Reid this round. Hopefully he's back and he's gone basically 380s in the last three games. So um, I think those two rookies, I'm happy to just sit there yep. um, because I don't feel like, you know, you're probably going someone who's averaging 75 to someone who's maybe averaging 85, 90. You're getting 10, 15 points of an upgrade. But on any given week, like you said, those guys could match those those other players you're upgrading to. So those two players on your field, I'm sort of happy to. If you've got a third one there, that's when I'm going, okay, I'm trying to move things around to get them up there. Yeah. Um, that's but, what I was going to ask you. Do you think that you've got Caldwell now and I've I've got Fife sitting there up until last oh, week. Fife's been a rookie as well, effectively. But do you think we're s- sitting in a more pretty position than other people will? If you had that third one, are I you looking so. to do something yeah, about it? Yeah, because some people might have been looking to upgrade rookies last week and then the Fisher news came through and they, yeah. they had to trade Fisher. So they might be sitting there with one extra rookie in their forward line than they did the week before, yep. unless they did go to a McRae or, or something like that. So if you are sitting with three rookies in your forward line, I would strongly be looking at trying to upgrade one of them. Okay, who to? Um, that's the question. That's the thing. Um, like Are you going to McRae without Shea seeing him without Libba? is up there. Um, what about Baker? 751k. You got the news of someone uh, who, who was injured. Um, oh, yeah. Who did we have an injury? Oh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, uh, it was... Hopper. Hopper, yeah. So Hopper's injured, done his hammy. He was more, um, of, a lim- more of a limper. Yeah, he definitely was more of a limper. So he he's not going to come back for a little while. I think that solidifies Baker's role a bit more, which is did always my concern. Did you say Baker saved that score or that he was did. patchy? Two scores. Sorry, two quarters. First quarter, I think he scored like 33. Final quarter, he scored 36. The middle two quarters, he was nowhere to be seen. See, that's fucked. Like, how can you trade in a guy that when he's giving you that rubbish? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Um, I'm I'd, thinking that maybe like the Hopper injury, the last quarter got him in there a bit more. But I guess you could justify it that way. Tough to say. Uh, so again, not too much confidence there. I, I couldn't pull the trigger on a Brian Myers or a Harry Mackay, um, Brad Hill, these sort of types. There's a guy that interests me a little bit. Okay. Matt Kennedy. Matt Kennedy's got three 100s in a row. Yep. Um. And his price is 680000 The issue here to me is that I'm pretty sure Chera is going to be back this week. Yeah, that's what's, how long does he have that role for? His role improved a lot just recently. I think he had like 70% CBAs. Now, I don't think with Chera back in the side, he's going to have that. But maybe it still ticks down and he holds on to maybe 40%. The thing for me is he's like 130000 cheaper mm. than a Shea. Um he also spent a bit of time in the back line for yeah. for Carlton when Zachy Williams got subbed out the previous week. Well, in the previous two weeks, he hasn't had that high CBA usage. So still he's been got in the tons. 20, you know, 20, and you're right, he still did get tons. So, yeah, th- this is this one's on the cheaper end of the spectrum as well. It's so still could, speculative, though. It is. I guess you could hide behind the fact that because it's cheaper, you're going to pocket some more cash potentially for what you do next week. This so. is kind of like the Caldwell jump two weeks ago, mm. you know, you're going to get a price rise. There's a potential it works well, but I do think eventually it'll kind of... It'll fizzle you know, out. It'll yeah. fizzle out. You'll need but to be ready to, to jump off when that change in role does come. But I'm I'm with you, mate, that we're, we're t- like stuck on options there. I was really, really hoping Libba would be back this week so we could see what McRae yeah, sucks. Scoring, like, uh, scoring was like. But, you know, of those options, I, I'd probably almost is be the tempted best. to, to yeah. go into McRae, to be fair. It probably is the most boring, but also the best option. Um, the other player I also don't mind is maybe perhaps a Dylan Moore, um, who seems to be back to scoring a bit more consistently. But even he's had two sub-50 scores in his game this season. Mm. And Hawthorne are obviously sucking as well. So that doesn't help his cause. <laughs> um um, yeah, so look, he's a guy who's traditionally had a really high floor, even as that high half forward kind of player. Um, but 
that's not been the case this season with yeah two sub fifty scores and like you said that's that might as well be a rookie if he comes out and gives you that yep. um, the week you trade him in so it probably is McRae um, but I'd probably only do it if I've got three rookies on field not the two I, I think you could probably trade better elsewhere is probably my read on it what are we doing with injured players mate because that's yes. I mean we we were lucky to dodge some bullets this weekend for sure. Um, yeah. What, what are you doing if you have a Rosie? What's what's to go with Marshall? What happened there? So like, Connor Rosie, let's touch on him first. So he's he's done the hammy. There's reports everywhere that it's a minor hammy. He's trying to run around and get on the field for the the showdown this week. I think that's not going to happen. If if you if he gets on the field for the showdown, then he hasn't actually done a hammy. Yeah. In my awareness, he's probably just aware of it. But yeah. I mean, some smart people have said that that's worse than doing it. So. <laughs> You're gonna die out here, like yeah. Yeah, I will. But I think you ha- if even if he misses a week, it's best twenty two now. You you got to shift, don't you? Is that where we're at? <sighs> See, if we knew, if like the fantasy gods, you know, part of the clouds, <laughs> they don't exist. Mate. They send down a little little raven, and they say the he's, raven. <laughs> he's, they're, Bro, they're, they got Wi Fi up. They're there, old mate. school, they, mate. They're all <laughs> nah, they're good. Um, me a text. Yeah, love you, fantasy gods. Be nice to me. Uh, <laughs> If they tell us it's just one week, if I could give you a hundred percent guarantee that it was just one week, yeah. I would say hold, hold him, get an upgrade, and then that that way next week you're gonna be one better, one premium better off. And it, it has happened before. I believe it was like um, the year that Cripper was going gangbusters at the start of the year. He did a hammy, missed a week, came back one twenty, kept going with his like huge season. Yeah. Um. So I think if we knew that, the problem with hamstrings is. You don't often see a one-week hamstring. You don't. Not when it's actually a hamstring. He, so, he got obviously showdown this week. There's big incentive to get up for the showdown. What time is the game? Because the, they play Thursday. It's like the first game. Yeah. When do they play the following week? So is they it play, later? They play Geelong the next week, which also, you know, is going to be a big game for On them. On a Saturday Geelong, night. Undefeated. So, but then they go into Hawks and North Melbourne. So, I, I think if, if I looked and saw that, you know, perhaps, the, you know, they played Adelaide this week and then they played some team they could beat up on the next week, then I'd think, oh, well, maybe it's more likely to be two weeks. But mm. if they're trying to rush him back... I mean, he's game, running. There's footage of him running. I mean, it's a it's a leisurely jog. It's not it's not like he's, you know, sprinting to, to get his plus six, you know, looking for the pill kind of, kind of run. But he is running already on Monday. He did it on Friday. So I think there's an outside chance that he is just out for a week. And but if what that is, is the that, case, I'm holding. But how do you know that's the case? Like, unless someone comes out and says he will only be out this week, and I don't know why they would do that because then they put themselves in a yeah. box. Why would they? Why they would knew a situation that? like like Clayton Oliver last year. He was supposed Sorry, to be out a week, uh, and that turned into like eight weeks. And the, um, Port Adelaide would have no incentive to come out and say he's yeah. only out a week because then they then they have to they, hold themselves. Yeah, so they, they open just, themselves up for that. So I just think that if he misses this week, there's you. I, I think the, the riskier bullet. option is to hold. The safer option is to trade. And I think with these types of things that go down, especially if you're holding cash, this is the option that you can do to try and get those big dogs. You know, if you've been hurting and looking at a Jordan Dawson and, and he's the guy you want, you go there. If you really like what you see from a Sarong, you go there. Yeah, I'd probably still go those two over a, a Merritt, who's still you know, fairly up there in terms of price. Yeah. But those other guys who, you know, Tom Green, potentially it is. Like those big dogs at the top there that are a little bit of value, but not sort of around that 900,000. Um, maybe harder to get to than a, you know, rookie down, rookie up. I think that's the opportunity you take to get one of those guys and get them in. Potentially for a VC or a C option this week uh, would be what I'd do if you are looking to trade. But there is something to, to holding, but you'd want to hope that it's just a week and you'd want to hope that you can do a good upgrade if you hold him. So, you know, maybe you are holding a bit of cash there and you can get some of these dud rookies off your field. Um, I think that's the play. Rowan Marshall, he's even he's even a tricky one because he played out the game, from yep. what I understand. I, again, I didn't watch this one, but from what I heard, it was an early knee knock yep. and got his score up to... I mean, it was still bad, but it was better than what it could have been if he was subbed out. They have North Melbourne this week. Even if he plays, I'd have to think he's that vital to their team that they're not going to put him in as a full-time Ruckman. And, um, you know, they had, I think, Hayes and Campbell were both emergencies on the weekend. Surely one of those guys comes in. Yeah, if you see if you see Campbell named... Yeah. The tough thing they is... They play early, I think. 
Four o'clock on Saturday, so fourth game of the weekend. So is it a trade? And then the, the follow-up question is, to who? Yeah, that is a good question. So um, you're now having to actually cough up money to, to get well, to Gorn. We'll talk about a, a downgrade option potentially in a second. Mm. There is a downgrade option in Jordan Sweet. I also think that Tim English is someone who's right for the picking as well. Yeah. Um, so I think there is a few options there, but I almost think that he's a more urgent trade out than a Connor Rosie because I think he's actually going to hurt you with his scoring if he's not right and if he's playing that mixed ruck role. You're also going to... You've also... You're losing a lot of cash too. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You've also seen a significant drop already. So, yeah, so if English, you've got both, I actually think I'd prioritise getting Marshall out. And English is pretty much just a straight swap across now. Uh, I think it's just 20K the difference or something like that. Yeah. So, so hopefully um, maybe you can do a little fix-up trade and maybe banked a bit of cash with the Fisher move last week and maybe you can do a little mini upgrade somewhere. Or, yeah, if English is back, his break-even's now at 94, so he's just going to kind of keep ticking on the run up. Coming and, up too. and like you say, you, the Rucks is obviously a line where you, you're going to compromise big if you don't trade in one of those guys yep. that can score big, yep. um, especially if other people have got the Gorns, the the Sherries and whatnot. You could um, be hemorrhaging points there. Um, let's talk about Jack Steele really quickly. Some people yep. are concerned about the amount of strapping on his knee. And obviously this is heightened, I think, because of the, the deja vu and the, you know, he the, loves strapping. The, the pain that people felt last year when obviously he had that strapping on his knee. Yeah. and He's Which it turned out right. not even to be the knee. Remember, it was the ankle he had surgery on in the off-season. Um, I reckon the medical staff just fucking with us. Yeah, just they're just... Pick I mean, he scored poorly, but it was up. also against Port. Um, didn't have any marks was maybe the other thing that people are concerned about. I am not as concerned about Jack Steele as I think others are. I think he had a tough matchup against Port Adelaide. And I'm going to give him... He's got Kangaroos. He's got Hawthorne. The next two weeks. I think so. the fact, like the fact is, in my opinion, you're not trading him this week anyway. No. So just no, you just, wait, you're just wait. Yeah, I mean, if something, if we get more information next week and something pops up, then we can make a new decision. But I just don't think I think going now would be a little bit yeah. early. I think I think you've got other things to worry about than Jack Steele. Uh, talking about the ruck trades, we talked about Marshall. Um, let's talk about Jordan Sweet because he is another big wrinkle to this week. Now the confirmation before the last game was that our mate. Uh, solo soldo. He's gone and injured himself. And for anyone who's a Richmond fan, this is not like this is not something that was unforeseeable. Like he, yeah. he spends a lot of time on the sideline. So Frequent occurrence. Um so he's been out there they've said five to six weeks. Yep. Um with he's got he's had a bit of surgery on his knee for a meniscus, I believe it was. So, you know, he's gone under the knife. It's it's never a good thing when you when you have a bit of surgery, no matter how minor it is. So five to six weeks, which basically brings them towards the buy round. They have that really good buy round. Yep. Jordan Sweet comes out and scores a ninety six. Now it was against a hampered Rowan Marshall. Yep. Um but still a Rowan Marshall at the end of the day and the Saints, you know, a low stoppage team, so they um you know, they don't don't give up a heap of points to Rucks traditionally, but is he someone that we can consider as a downgrade option, as a cash generator? There's probably a few different scenarios where we can consider Jordan Sweet. I think the first and easiest scenario, if you have the three Rucks in Gorn, Grundy, and Sherry, absolutely, 100%, I think you should be trading him in and yep. going Grundy down to him. That still pockets you basically $400,000. You can pretty much get a rookie up to anyone. Yeah, with bang. that kind of money. So I think that is an easy trade if you have those three. It's a gift from the fantasy gods, really. Like, it's come at the perfect time. It's sweet. Um, it's it's very, very sweet. That was a good one. Uh, <laughs> so simple, so good. All of them are good ones, man. No, no, just that one. Okay. Um, what if you are a, say you are a, a Gorn Marshall or a, a Sherry Marshall owner? Marshall down to sweet. A, Marshall down a, to sweet. That's a lot of cash. It's a lot of cash. You're making about five hundred thousand dollars. If you see him being able to do like what Sherry has done, then I don't so much mind this because you, you're maybe not going to lose out points wise. Uh, but I think I feel a lot safer in doing the maybe the the Marshall to English. Mm. Okay, or I mean. Yeah, Gorn's pretty fully priced now, but uh, yeah. yeah, this would be very aggressive and you're pocketing so much cash that you, you're you not going to be able to spend it all in a week, so you're actually going to be no, carrying but I don't, I don't think that's terrible. Um, 
I think if you are cash strapped, like if you don't have much cash in the bank right now, you'd what, want five hundred k bank. Well, like yeah, that. do that and then get an upgrade somewhere else. To put on a rookie, yeah. yeah. Whereas if you do like a, a Marshall to English, your other trade's going to be nothing. It could be nothing. Yeah, yeah okay, like, it's true. So maybe I'm looking from the perspective that I've got two hundred k sitting in the bank. So yeah, I, I can yeah, see. You're kissed, mate. I, I'm on the tip, mate. I tell. I keep. But yeah, no. This. If if you do have two hundred k sitting in the bank, yeah. then maybe you could do something else. Maybe you could do like a, I don't know, like a. A Clark up to, oh sorry, a Sharp up to someone cheap, or, or or get a Dempsey up to one of those, you know, seven hundred k forwards or something like that. Um, and I think that's probably a better option. But if you don't have that option okay. and you need the cash from somewhere, I think going down to him is fine. The last scenario, which is yeah, a scenario that about this I find myself in, is is he just a better cash cow than some of the other rookies, despite the fact that he's over two hundred k more than some of the other guys? Yep. Is there a case that we spend up on our bench and trade someone, and this is a scenario that I'm looking at this week, someone like an, uh, a Dempsey through DPP with yep. Harry Barnett. A lot of us have that ruck forward in our R3 spot. We put a Dempsey down to Sweet yep. and then do a Clark or a Sharp up to, say, a Dacos, for example, um, if you've got a bit of cash sitting in the bank. Just um, instead of doing like a cheaper rookie like a Seth Campbell or a Cadman down to a Jones, yeah, and getting your upgrade done that way. What What are your thoughts on Jordan Sweet as a cash maker? Simply just to sit on your bench. Yeah, th- there's a couple of interesting parts to to this for me. The the potential lack of rookie trade in options this week is is one. So for me, Jones would be an automatic trade in if he hadn't only come in when mm. Toby Green got suspended. So that one's going to be watching closely. And if Toby Green does come back in and Darcy Jones holds his spot... I don't think you can drop him. I don't think you can drop him this week, but it's the weeks after. That's what I was about to say, yeah. is, is like how sketchy does that become? GWS are they're like, they're flag contenders. Like Their, their team is... Because it's not just later. Green that's missing. They're missing Cornelio, who's back in one to two weeks. Yeah. They also didn't play their sub in Brent Daniels, who apparently was under a bit of a... like He was a test coming into the game, started as the sub, and they chose not to play him, probably to preserve him. Um, and he plays a very similar role. Um, and he's, you'd think, normally a walk-up start. You've obviously got Harvey Thomas in there, who they like. So it just, yeah. it, to me... It's a tough one because he fits, other than that, what he did in this first game fits the perfect bill for get that guy in there, Go trade him yeah. in as a cash cow. So They were talking him up too. Like the, the commentators loved him. The helmet, he the stood helmet, out. He did st- stand out. So the, reason the helmet's I'm, worth an extra 10 points. Correct, yeah. correct. <laughs> or a concussion, if you're brave, sure. yeah. Um The reason I bring it up, of course, is because you have to make that decision. Well, Sweet, we feel, is going to be solid in that role. What, yeah. well, he plays ask, first game too. He plays Thursday night. Sweet that makes does. it a little bit tougher. What do you... If he... Averages ninety over the next five weeks. How much money will he go up? Uh, he'll make at least two hundred k doing that. So he'll be well over six hundred k if he does that. Um, so I think if he averages, what, what, well, what do you? I'll spin the question another way. What do you expect him to average as a solo ruck for Port? I th- I've said this before. I think if you're the solo ruck in any team and you're not averaging 80, 85, yeah. 90 even, then like. What are you doing? You're essentially playing as a midfielder, but you. But not only do you get first chance to get one point, yeah. but then. If you tap it down close, you get the first cuddle, opportunity yeah. to cuddle as Look well. Look at so Tristan Sherry, mate. He loves that. He fits the bill. So I, I just think that if he is there, he's the the uh, solo soldo replacement, mm-hmm. then I reckon he could be that 90 guy. He scores an 85 this week. He goes up 54K, yep. according to Maria's Magic Price Projector. If he averages 55 over the next five rounds, he's going to make 201,000. Averages 000. 55. Sorry, 85. 85. Uh, if he averages 85, which, like you said, it's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Um, and that's right up to his buy. He's going to make $201,000. I also just have so much more confidence in his job security. Yeah. So him being there, being a ruck cover. The other thing which I think maybe might be slept on a little bit, and because of the conversation we had earlier with the Ford issues, and if you're going to go down the 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 you know the lane of trying to just hold it down with some rookies, yep. if you have that Harry Barnett or that other Gold Coast, oh, sorry, West Coast um, non-playing ruck, you move them into your forward line. You now have a loop option in your forward line. So you get a double dip at trying to get a loop action in your forward line with those rookies, which if you're trying to go up against the guys who traded McRae or, or, or mm. Caldwell or those other guys, um, you're going to want to do that. Does it fuck you up on the other end for DPP being able to swing people through your utility to just 
like make trades work in the next five weeks. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think he's got the he's got the flexibility. We've got a lot of other DPPs with mid forwards and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's okay. Sweet's also got proven scoring in the Scoobies too. There's, he does. If you go back and have a look at his Scooby numbers, there's um he's got some ceiling scores there too. So. Um, yeah, he, he did this on eleven disposals. So he had thirty six dispos- uh, thirty six hit outs. He had uh, six tackles. So we love rucks that tackle. Three marks. Yeah. Um, so Good. he's got big Rob this week. So it's, it's a, a tougher, tougher matchup, matchup, isn't it? Then he but goes then he's got Geelong, Hawthorne, Hawthorne Meek, North, Carlton, which are all easier for rucks. Yeah. Hey, mate. You luck. You. you- Bloody convincing me, so we'll see, eh? Yeah, I think if if you were just going to ask me who makes the most cash over the next five weeks, I think Jordan Sweet makes more cash than you were Woden's, your Darcy Jones, simply because I have more confidence he's going to be there and be in a really good high-scoring role. Um, so if you can make it work and if it if your upgrade can still happen that way, I'd probably go there. If, for example, it it fucks up your upgrade, yeah. then I wouldn't. I'd, I'd just prioritise getting the player you want on your field, get that scoring going. Um, but yeah, if you can still make the upgrade work, I, I do think he's a decent option, even if you don't have one of those playing R3 guys there. That was just strategy chat, mate. Right. You Let's, haven't even had a chance to bloody kung fu anyone yet. Let's get chopping, Let's mate. Let's do it, eh? You got your new people in here? or is Yeah, this yeah, those are my new oh, people. Okay. Yep. Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> All right, now we've got a few, you know, some players in here that maybe have stuck around longer than they should have because we've had a lot of carnage recently. So oh, the first guy here probably should have been traded out a while ago, and I imagine a lot of us have, and this will be the last week I have him in here, but Massimo D'Ambrosio needs to be traded. He didn't play last week. He might have been useful as a loop last week, but he has got to go now. Give that guy the snip. Um, Luke Jackson, well, I have at number two. Give him, just give him the chop. Just don't give him the chop. Don't give the snip. Jeez, man. We should have called this... Mutilating the, people. The, the snipping block. Mutilating? Yeah. Snipping's not like chopping your dick off. Just, <laughs> I know that. But come on, mate. <laughs> just trying to... Just yeah, a bit of effect. Stop the swimmers. <laughs> okay, next week, no chopping uh, block. This is the snipping the block. Snipping block. Okay, as if we're not. We don't want enough. any more little D'Ambrosios running around. In the no, world. we do not. No, no little swimmers from him. Uh, <laughs> Luke Jackson, I think I've got at number two. His role has deteriorated. He's gone down, I think, under thirty percent in terms of uh, CBAs, and he put up a dirty sixty with a goal in that as well. Um, so I think he is a very urgent trade out to me. Anyway, stop. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for that diagram. <laughs> Just showing you, mate. Yep. Uh, Zach Fisher, I've got here at number three. Now, obviously, a lot of us trade him out with him named as a sub. Do you think he is named as a sub or is cut again this week? Or do you think he comes back into the side? I don't... Even if he does, he he was just underwhelming for what we were hoping anyway, wasn't he? He versus the Saints. No, it's... That's... To me, that's... You don't get involved in that stuff. <sighs> with the forward line? Are you talking about if you held him and if you held him, if he's already oh, okay. in, you're not sorry, trading back sorry, in. Okay, but if sorry. you've got him, maybe you missed the news. You couldn't do a reverse trade. Like, okay, maybe he's the still temptation sitting there. Is. But like I said before, Clarko Magnets just throws him on the board. So what are we guaranteed? Well, what's, I don't think Fish is playing anywhere else. Like if he's in the team, he's probably playing. You're off right in saying there's a chance that he gets green vest or red vest. Colby yes. Kircher played. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't bragged about that yet. But he obviously played in the back line and got you a good score on the bench there too. So, oh man. There's a bit of money on his head too. I think this is one of those ones where if, if he's the guy that you can trade out to get where you want to go. Oh yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be. I, hanging no, on I mean, he's number three here, but I just I'm just interested to see if he is going to be chopped from North Melbourne or if he's going to be back in the team and they um you know they bridge some things. Maybe they put Sheasel more into the midfield and, and things like that. I think that one is an interesting one. Um, I think if he's named, I might drop him down the list here a little bit. Uh, Zach Williams is there for me. So he is, again, someone you might have held with the carnage last week. Yep. He still needs to go. Um, and I've got Connor Rosie there. Um, you could also put uh, Rowan Marshall there as well. So basically your injured premiums. I think those four guys are doing like almost worse than a red dot because they're actively not scoring well, losing cash yep. and just decreasing in value. Um, I'd rather hold an injured premium, put another rookie on field, then hold those other guys because I think they're weighing your team down. Yep. Um, and I think long-term you're going you're gonna to benefit more from holding them. But if you don't have those issues, I do think that the, the injured guys then can go after that. Talk to me about a, a guy like uh, the Sharpmeister because you were kissed mm. on the tip. With that and this yes. week. Yes. Oh, no, smart guys. You just bench him, mate. Yeah. Just uh, put in Colby McKercher. Clearly, he was no going to go 100 plus. You're a spud, mate. What are we uh, doing, Sharpie? <laughs> so, I think the next option after all those guys on that one that I haven't got on screen here is the Fatten Rookies. And, and Sharp falls into that category. So, um, 
in this category, I've got like players like Dempsey, yep. Sharp, Aaron Cadman, uh, Seth Campbell. Um, I'm sure there's some others that I'm forgetting that you could also trade out as well. Send them to the abattoir. Send them to the abattoir. I think I probably or milk them. What's the? Well, it's the chopping block, mate. We're we're oh, swinging axes. Far. I thought we could get a bit of milk again with your. your... Is me, Matt Suckling. <laughs> yeah. Where's your mind? Was it, what do you do? Are we fattening them in terms? Yeah, oh, they're I'm cash not, cows, mate. They're, I don't profess to be a dairy farmer, but I wouldn't mind milking these cash cows. Yeah, well, maybe Ooh. there you go. Mil- milking them. So I think um, I'd probably trade Dempsey over Sharp. Sharp has Richmond this week. And Wings against Richmond, you would think, go pretty good. Didn't didn't Wings against the Bulldogs go pretty good? Didn't Billings have a 160 against the Bulldogs earlier in the year? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't good. He, this is just Wings, though. Like, you can have an up and down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably still get rid of Sharp second to Dempsey, but if, like, I'm probably going to get rid of both this week, and I think okay. that that's fine. Um, but basically, with, you, with the cash cows, I think get rid of the worst rookie that gets you the trade that you want. Yeah. It's so kind of the, the, the thing. A good example is, like, we've got Seth Campbell. He, he's going to start sort of leveling out in price, but you, you're saying that if Seth Campbell doesn't get me where I want to go, then trade Ollie Dempsey. Get, get, the, get the other guy out. Yeah. Um, if, if you can get the trade with Seth Campbell, then obviously you get Seth Campbell, he's not going to score real, he's not going to be a fieldable player. Yep. His price is not moving, so get him out, but I still would prioritise getting the bigger player. Um, now, on this next one, I've got Brody Grundy. I still think that if he's sitting at your R2, it's a bit trickier. I like the move going down to sweet, or you could go to an English. I think are your two options there. Uh, but I don't think that's a bad option either way. Uh, and Tom Powell, at the moment, I am going to be holding. I'd have to think. So he didn't have a single CBA until Will Phillips got subbed. Yep. Will Phillips gets subbed out. He goes into the middle. He didn't do anything with it, mind you. Like he had one tackle or something like that. But he was going so well before then. I'd have to think that. Phillips is not going to be there. So, what, first of all, you've got to see that Phillips is not in the team. That's what I was going to say. What, what will, will that change your thinking completely if uh, Phillips I is I think named? it would. I think really? if Phillips so is you, named in the team... You'd shift power. But that's going to leave you I one more short in your forward line. So it really... It, and you don't want to trade in a forward. You want to trade in someone else. No, I don't. Fielder. So, that, I don't think you would do that. We, I think you'd still hold him. We you? Have, yeah, well, the thing is, you have to remember, before this round, he was averaging 96 points. Yeah, it's... Like, he it's was fucked. going really well. It's he fucked was, up. He was one of, like, we did that best boys and he was in the top three. Like, he was going great. He was one of the best boys, yeah. 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 Like, before that game, <laughs> he went 82, 113, 89, 103, 113. Like, those are great scores in our forward line. Uh, and but all re- that changed was the role. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to... Probably the confidence, too. Like, if you if you get inexplicably just chucked in the forward line, you... Yeah, you're probably like, what the fuck's going right. on here? But I'm going to be watching the stuff coming out of North Melbourne closely this week. Yeah. My, my gut says that I'm holding... Now, if you hold him and he goes shit again, he's going to plummet in price. Yeah, that's the killer. His break even is at one eighteen, but um, I just think that there's a world where he just scores as much as the player you're upgrading him to, and it's a bit of a waste of trade. So I think the tough thing too he's is down there. For you me. just if you're trading him out, you you have to trade another forward. You can't get to a scenario where you you're going from two rookies to three rookies or three rookies, God forbid, to four mm. rookies. Like it's just that's killer. So he might be someone that you could look look to loop a little bit. As well, so okay. for example, if you did that trade where you got into Jordan Sweet just to safeguard yourself, put him on the bench and have a look at him, and you know your Eagles players play on the uh, uh, the late Saturday night game, so you could have, have a look at him, and if you like the score, you can take him on. If you don't, you could then maybe have a look at some of those other guys uh, a bit later. But God, it feels bad talking about looping power instead of those rookies. Yeah, the only issue is is that we've got a lot of the Ford rookies playing earlier than him, so. Um, you know, Harvey Thomas plays before him. The the Saints boys both play in the same game, so not Tough. many not many good options after that. But still, definitely an option. Um, so yeah, those are the chopping block. I'm sure I've forgotten someone, but if you have a question about someone to chop, drop it in the comments below, or hit me up on askme at q dot com forward slash ball boys. Nice. All right, trade, trade targets. targets. All righty, back to back weeks. Nick Dacos is number one. I should have fucking traded him in last week. Um, Look, he was still probably underwhelming, would you say? Uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting one. I, I kind of 
after that uh, you traded first, him in. yeah I did and after that first quarter from that point on I felt pretty comfortable that he was going to do something that I wasn't going to be completely disappointed yep. in um, the other thing you, you can always hide behind there is the fact that he's going to be one of your defenders at the end yep. of the day too so whether he's sitting in your midfield right now or, or back there um, you yep. know 100 when you trade in you, you can't be too unhappy he's priced under 100 anyway so you kind of with that score even though it's disappointing you kind of got exactly what you paid for and it's only really upside from there so he's still number one number two for me is Tim English okay um, he is priced at a hundred and what is he priced at one hundred and eight now. He's gone back to back big um, tons, and I think the threat of Sam Darcy, you know, getting into his ruck time has dropped these last couple of weeks, and we've seen that improve with the scoring. He's got a good run coming up as well. Um, the Bulldogs play Hawthorne this week, who give up a lot of points, and as an Kind of the way he plays as an extra midfielder, probably even more so relevant for him. But then he's got Richmond. GWS is the best matchup yep. for Rucks as well in three games in a row. Um, so I think that he is primed for the picking now. He's high on your trade targets if you uh, if you have a Marshall. Is that right? If you've got, if you've got a Marshall or a Grundy, specifically for the Grundy owners. Yeah, um, you're not trading Sherry yeah. to him. Although the, the, the Jordan Sweet thing is a, another wrinkle in that. But I think as yep. an upgrade, he would be right up there for me. I've got Tom Green next, yep. like what I score, saw on the weekend, and he's down in price. Um, a lot of people are a bit freaking out about the round 12 buy, but I still think it's fine. He's really only him and Goulden that you're wanting in your midfield that have that round 12 buy, so uh, I'm happy to roll with him there. I think he's going to be someone who's he's priced at 108. I think you can easily put five points on top of that and uh, be a big captain option for you there. And then I've got Andrew Brayshaw, who... Would have been higher if he finished more than the negative two in the final quarter. Right, I'm sure. He, um, his CBAs, the concern with him at the start of the year was wing time. Yeah. I saw zero wing time on the weekend. He was tied with Sarong with the most CBAs. And he's back at that price that I traded him in last week. I started with him last the year. week before or last, week, last year. It's that 102 price tag that whenever he seems to find a way to get there, but this is kind of like that magical price stat figure for him that presents potentially 10 plus points of upside. I'm a little bit less confident this time around because you've got Fife, you've got Hayden Young kind of taking some of the points there. I think his tackle numbers are down a bit more than normal. Yeah. Um, but I do think that a lot of people will be looking at Sarong. I think Brayshaw for a fair bit cheaper with a good buy as well is probably my preferred option there. In the first three quarters, he looked everything that you a want Brayshaw bucks, to look. Yeah. He looked thirsty. He was demanding those short 45s. And, and I have no idea were, what happened in that last quarter. I mean, you were you probably mossed it, to be fair. I did. You, I was wanting him saying, to like well, slow down. I want this option. I think at one point you said, that's it. I'm getting him in next week just because you liked what you saw. And so, you know, perhaps then there's still an argument to say, well, the, the last quarter's an anomaly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's not going to score negative points. That's just ridiculous. I think he went like two behinds. And also he gave a handball off to Clark to have a shot. So he, he could have kicked two goals in this one pretty easily. Yeah, potentially. So I think, you know, if you like what you saw, there's no reason that you might not get a leg up on the competition by going this week when everyone thinks, oh, just 80, 80 is not setting the world on fire. think Richmond. It, it could be a play for sure. Um, yeah. And yeah. then I've got Jack McRae there last at number five, um, just as the forward option. Like I said, I'd probably only go there myself if I had three rookies. If I have the two in Wilson and um, a Harley Reid, I'm happy to just sit there and take it on a bit. Um, but he is probably the pick of the forwards, I'd say, at this stage. I'll throw an honorable mention who's not on the screen here in Jordan Dawson, who's the most expensive player on this list. But... I think that there's every chance that from here, and probably from the last two weeks, he's the best scoring player for the rest of the season. And so if you have a chance to get a player like this, he would be my pick of the most expensive guys. He is still, however, priced at 110, 111. So it's kind of like that bond of a few weeks ago. Like he might have quote unquote bottomed out, but you are still paying a decent amount. So that's why I have him down. But if you want a big dog, if you want a big guy, the only thing, the other reason he's bound here is he's got Port Adelaide this week. Um, so matchup wise, it's not the instant reward that maybe you would want. So for that reason, you might be able to just wait another week or two. Showdown, but strikes me as the kind of guy who might yeah, come out and go yeah, absolutely maybe. bang. The CBAs are interesting with him. He's a guy that I'll certainly look at this week. You know, he obviously had those two weeks prior to popping that huge um, 
150 where he's down below the kind of 60% CBAs. And then even on the weekend, he wasn't back up to that 80% number that we, we know and like, but maybe he's just getting feeling more confident in in that role that he's playing. So it, it, interesting that that 60 that he gave the other week, even when you look at the rest of his scores, there's nothing that you're really unhappy with. I think there's an 80 in oh, there. Yeah. But yeah, that was treadful rain the first week. He kinda, everything's around the mark. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's every chance that he could uh, continue to do what he did in the last two weeks and, and get away from people. Because I know you were pretty keen on getting Dawson in. Are you still thinking that way? or Like I said, I haven't had a good look at everything today with, um, with work and everything. But um, it, it's definitely on the radar there. I like the idea of having that guy that I can put the, the C or VC on that can give you a 150. It's he definitely can go stretches where he goes 120 for 10 weeks, um, which, you know, even at 110 is good value. And then you put a captaincy on him and he's he's a good play there. Given um, given we're talking trade targets, can I just generally pick your brain about the fact that we seem to have so many of these players who we were just loving the fact that they were dropping in price, dropping in price, dropping yeah. in price. and. It, it almost seems like the bottomless pit got these Melbourne midfielders, oh, the, Melbourne the ass is dropping out of them and you kind of go like, oh, I love that their price is dropping. But at what point does mm-hmm. it just become ridiculous? You're like, you're like, I can't trade in Clary Oliver because I'm not even confident he can give me an 80. Like what, where, wh- how do we judge that fine line between yes, they've dropped in value and, and actually admitting it's not the player that it was last year. This is this is the this is the car winning question right here. And this is, I think what separates those, like, cause we all, the value mantra is loud and clear yeah. in fantasy right now and um so i guess the the roadmap is sort of a lot of people are following but it's like how you get there that separates the the really good coaches and the coaches who are maybe just a step off the pace because you know you you could you could look at someone and go oh they're value based on what they've done or or things like this and i sent a tweet out i think last week you know the it's, there's every chance the player that averages the most from here on out has not done anything close to that. Like last year, up until round seven, I think it was, Brayshaw averaged uh, 99 points. He then went to average 115 from that point on. Uh, Zach Butters was one of the big trade-in targets when he moved to the midfield, was averaging 88, then went on to average 106 from there. So, But on the flip side... There were players that seemed like value in a Jack Steele, in uh, Jack McRae, all the Jacks apparently, um, that seemed like value because of what they'd done in the past, but they burnt a lot of people who jumped on them because it it was different, you know, like something has changed. So you want to get the value, but you also don't necessarily want to catch a falling knife because you can, you know, it, it'll really hamstring your team there. So... Um, Clayton Oliver, I think. Well, let me get let, let me just give you like a, a black and white thing. Like Clayton Oliver comes out this week. They played Geelong and he scores one ten. You know, role still being reasonable there. One ten is is one week of good scoring enough for you to go? Yep, I'm happy to invest there. Is it two weeks of good scoring? Is it something you see in a role? Is it like there has to be something that you point to, doesn't yeah. there? So it's very. It, I think there's got to be a number of factors you're looking at. You, you can't just look at the score and go, yeah. "Yep, he's going to score this." Then I'm getting him in. The one thing I'm looking for Clayton Oliver in particular is his time on ground. He's always been a mid 80s kind of guy for time on ground. He yeah. plays high CBAs and has high time on ground. At the moment, that's a mid 70s. So I want to see that over that 80 percent CBAs. Uh, sorry, 80 percent time on ground before I'm ready to launch. Um, I want to see it past the eye test. Uh, and there were times... Early that in that game, he, he was looked, passing it. He fucking, looked good. He so, was going to be my trading target after a bloody quarter time. He was loving So it. he was getting there. And there will undoubtedly be a price where he's just too cheap and the downside risk is non-existent, essentially. Yeah. Um, but it's also going to hinge on what else... What the fuck is that? Oh, someone told me how to fix that. I just never got around to it. <laughs> um, that we're like... That's all you can get to. And if that's all you can get to, great, do it, keep getting upgrades. But if you have other options, and I think we all still do, um, then I'm still leaning that way. But to segue into the next segment, um, which is a new segment here, um, okay. which is the watch list. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. <laughs> Always watching. So these are some players that I'm just, I've got on my radar that I'm not ready to trade in yet. And maybe we never do trade them in, but they're guys that if they get cheap enough or something changes, we can look to trade them in. Uh, Matt Kennedy, we talked about before. Yep. Like the, what I'm seeing from here. If I see the role continue with Chera coming in, he's maybe someone I'm ready to launch onto. Clayton Oliver, he's priced at. Where is he priced at? It's ridiculous. He is for, priced. For someone who went on the run that he did at the start of last year. 85. That's crazy. It is crazy. What did He, he was going like 120 for the first... 
what, yeah. seven, eight weeks of last season. And so. he's a consistent, just 105-plus averaging guy for his entire career, yeah, essentially. It's insane. Um, so he's getting to that point. If you see something from him, and he's a guy that you can only just get to, eventually he's going to be a guy that we, we just... There's zero risk or minimal risk and a lot of upside. Yep. Um, the next guy here in a similar vein is, is Lockie Neal. He did something similar to this last year. Uh, he's a bit more, had a few more injuries, I think, this year. Yeah. Um, so a little bit more questionable there. Darcy Parrish, low time on ground. He played up to the medal on the on the Anzac Day game and, and looked all right, but still concerns about the time on ground and the yeah. other mids in there. Um, but he's someone who's getting super cheap. And a couple of big dogs in Bont and Marshall. I don't think I could... Obviously, Marshall, we're talking about potential trading out. But Bont just seems a little off to me as well. Um, now, you've already traded him in. Yeah, I'm... But, but, but what, do you, what do you see when you when you watch Bont? Like, I know you, you're frustrated in the heat of the moment, but like... I don't think he's ever been a guy that looks... He's thirsty. no Errol Goulden. So he's uh, when you look at him, you don't think, oh, Bond's not thirsty. Because like Errol and Brayshaw, they've got the hands out. They're, they're just such sea sponges, aren't they? But Bontepelli, what he does is effortless. But I think the thing that that I've been seeing in the last couple of weeks is that just every opportunity where there might be to make a tackle, he's just kind of hanging on around the outside. Yeah, of the stuff. He's, just, he's just definitely watching, seen that. You know, any opportunity that where he is to get that short 45 kick, it just hasn't quite been there for him. And then that's what's knocking the ceiling off the score. So obviously there was a stinker, but then he's got 110, you know, 98. Whereas last year, you know, add three tackles, add four tackles because he's the guy that's in there making it, you know, add a few more plus sixes because he's finding that little one on the outside. So... It looks like he's just kind of on cruise control, but it's it's hard to say because Bontempelli's always looked like a player that just does it effortlessly too. Yeah, and this is the thing where you, you've got to kind of dig a bit deeper than just go, oh, he's, he averaged this last year. He's now priced 10 points under that, therefore his value. The things have changed at the Bulldogs as well. Last year, they were the second highest ruck contest team behind um, Adelaide, and they were over 100 ruck contests per game. This year so far, they're averaging 90 ruck contests per game, which have them in the bottom half of the AFL. And um, and his CBA's numbers are, while still really good, he's behind someone like an Adam Traw in terms of yep. CBA's, and that's even with a couple of games without Libba in the mix as well, playing a little bit more forward at times. It's not much, but it's enough when you're at 118 you know, just to bring you down, you know, a couple of percentage points there. So something else I'm interested to watch this week, Libba back, hopefully. I'm interested to watch just how that impacts Bontempelli around the contest as well, because, you know, Libba's just a, a bull inside there. Is he going to be farming it out to Bontempelli a little yeah. bit more? Whereas probably you know, farming out to Ed Richards now. Well, don't. No, nah, fuck that. Don't even talk to me. That's, High CBA getter on, on the that team. that note, we got to wrap it up. That's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to know about fucking Ed Richards taking my points off me. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So lots of happening this week, guys, but I want to leave on this note and remember that even when things look shit, use it as a time to get up because uh, chaos is a ladder. <laughs> Chaos is absolutely but a ladder. Nerd. And uh, the best coaches will thrive when uh, when shit hits the fan. So stick at it, guys. And uh, we'll catch you for the live show. We will be doing a live show. Apologies for the lack of live show last week. We we're basically mid-round, so uh, uh, lots of digest. So we'll catch you before the Friday game this week. Until then, bye.